In this video we're going to continue our example uh, from our previous video looking at our plastic deformations, but in this case we're going to use an alternative approach uh, from our ACI uh, uh, simple approach. Um, so here we're going to use um, Matic and uh, Corley's approach for finding plastic deformations. So when using an alternate approach for plastic deformations, our elastic and uh, mechanism deflections are going to be the same. Um, so this is this 0.94 inches is the same uh, as we found before um, for our fixed fixed beam. So this was uh, our deflection one was our deflection until we form our hinges at the end and then our deflection two was the additional deflection to form a hinge at the middle. And you can view the, the previous video to see how we did that. Um, the only difference um, when finding our, our plastic deformations now, uh, using Matic and Corley, we'll, we have a different expression for our plastic hinge length, LP. Uh, so you remember before, we just use half D, so our hinge length gets a little longer depending on our moment gradient C. Uh, then we also have a different expression for our, ulti our uh, strain at ultimate um, for our concrete. So before, we just had uh, 0 0.003 for our ACI uh, approach. Um, now we have uh, some additional terms based on our base width and our moment gradient and then the, uh, the area of our uh, compression steel. So we have two different moment gradients that we can choose from. Uh, if we're looking at our initial moment gradient, so before we have um, yield in the middle, we would have a Z equal to 5 feet. If we look at uh, our moment after we have uh, form our mechanism, we would have a Z equal to about three and a half feet. Uh, so first you need to kind of choose which, which uh, moment gradient you're going to deal with. Um, so we're going to use a moment gradient of uh, five feet. Um, this is going to be a little more uh, conservative um, because it'll give us a, a lower um, ultimate um, strain. But something in between would be okay as well. The other assumption that we're going to make in this case is we're going to uh, conservatively assume that uh, we have um, zero effects from our compression reinforcement. This will just make our, our calculations a little simpler. We're now ready to uh, plug in all our values to find our plastic hinge length and our strain at ultimate. So first 0.5 times D which is 21.5 remember uh, whether we're looking at uh, the compression and tension steel here so we're in the um, negative moment region so we'd be looking at our negative uh, steel here so that would be our D um, and then we add in 0 0.05 times 5 feet times 12 inches per foot and that'll give us our value of our hinge length of 13.75 inches um, so similarly, we can plug in for our EC ultimate, and uh, we would just plug in our B, which is 12 inches, over Z, which is 5 feet times 12 inches, and we'd get our, uh, we'll get our epsilon ultimate to be 0 0.007. We can then use our strain and ultimate, and our C that we found before. So our C ACI was equal to 3.04. Uh, to find our curvature at ultimate. So our ultimate curvature is then just our ultimate strain, 0 0.007, divided by our C, 3.04 inches. This will give us a curvature of 230 times 10 to the negative fifth radians per inch. So this is our ultimate curvature that we'll use. With this ultimate curvature, we can now find our ultimate rotation. So our ultimate rotation is just equal to our uh, ultimate curvature, which we found was 230 times 10 to the negative fifth radians per inch. And we know our uh, yield curvature from our uh, section analysis was 13.6 times 10 to the negative fifth radians per inch, so six here, and then all times our hinge length, which we just found to be 13.75 inches. 
Um, so then we'll find our ultimate rotation to be 0 0.03 radians. Matic and Corley allow us to multiply our theta sub u by this factor, which is 1 plus 0 0.4 divided by a square root of d times our z, which is 5 feet, times 12 inches per foot, divided by our d again, 21.5 inches. So we'll get this to be 21.24. So we'll get about a 24% a increase uh, from our theta u from before. So we'll find our theta sub t u to be equal to 0 0.0372 radians. So once again, our rotation that we can have that can occur after um, we form a mechanism theta two three is equal to our total rotation capacity minus the rotation that has already occurred in the hinge. So in our case, the rotation capacity is our theta t u point zero three seven two, and our rotation that's occurred so far we found before to be point zero zero. Uh, six five radians, and and you can see the the previous uh, video for how we found that. Um, so we'll find our rotate our available rotation to be point zero three zero seven radians, and this is what we'll use to find our deflection. Then uh, we can once again assume a kinematic free body diagram, and we have our rotation theta two three. We have our length l over two. So then our deflection is just equal to our theta 2, 3 times L over 2. So in our case, when we plug in our values, we'll get a deflection here of 4.42 inches. Our total deflection then is just equal to our theta 1 plus theta 2, which we found before um, as elastic and uh, deflection to form a mechanism plus our theta 3 which is our plastic deformation. So we'll get our total deformation in this case to be 5.36 inches. And we can compare this to our uh, total that we found using ACI approach uh, which was 1.33 inches. So you can see that uh, when we assume uh, another approach which uh, takes into account more of the ductility that we can get from our um, our reinforced concrete section, we can get a much higher um, deformation. Um, 